Hey guys, it's May May, and I'm here with one of your very favorite people. I promise you already know her. She doesn't even need an introduction, but I'm going to introduce her anyway. I'm here with Cinnamon Cooney, and you may know her as the Art Sherpa, and you may also know her as a teacher for Made It Con um, from the spring and also for our fall event that's coming up in Pigeon Forge. Now, I warned you in my last live with Rhonda, we were talking about her classes. Cinnamon's classes are almost gone. Like I cannot stress that enough to you guys. So when Cinnamon starts talking about these wonderful classes she's gonna be teaching and all the knowledge you can get, you have to run, don't walk to sign up. The link is the first link in the description already there for you guys. Just go click on that. It takes you to all Cinnamon's classes. And without further chatting, here's Cinnamon Cooney, guys. Hey everybody. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here. Hopefully our notification went out so like my peeps know that I'm over on Maymay's channel, which is like the funnest channel. Just so happy over here all the time. Hey, it did go out because I got the notice. Did you get, did you sign up? <laughs> yes, I got a notice. I'm so excited. I love when things work. I'm really excited about this fall in Pigeon Forge. I am really into it. Have you been to Pigeon Forge before? I have not actually the last time that I was in Tennessee was for the St. Jude, Jude tour in Memphis. So that was like my whole thing. And I have friends and family in Tennessee. So I'm ready to be there. You have family there too. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That was really cool. Okay. In the chat, they're like, yes, we got the notice. We got the notice. Everybody got it. Cool. Cool beans. All right. Tell us about your, first off, tell us where we can find you. If for chance somebody has been living under a rock, Tell us how to find oh, Cinnamon. I mean, the well, YouTube is big like space. So if you don't know who I am, it is totally okay. Totally understandable. I agree with that. <laughs> it's giant out there. Um, so my, I like to teach new people how to paint. And I specialize mostly in acrylic because, you know, cheap, easy, clean up, all that. Uh, it's the Art Sherpa. If you just pretty much put that in Google, you'll, you'll find some version of me out there with purple hair red hair crazy hair or this new hair which i adore gotta change it up i love it yeah if you grew up with madonna you know you've got to reinvent that's true that is true <laughs> she taught us she taught us well that's right i did grow up with her so we know that you can't stay the same you, it's just the craziest thing i'm just like it's all good <laughs> So yeah, I'm so excited about getting to do this. I love the last Made It Con so much. That was so much fun. Getting to hug everybody and say hi to everybody and paint with people was great. I um, I do step by step, so everything is really explained. And I try to approach it from the idea that maybe somebody hasn't picked up a brush since kindergarten. So like, it's down to like how much water is on the brush, how we load the brush, just every part of it. Um, I've got several classes. You do. Talk to them. Oh, I've got the list here in front of me. So why don't we start with the Wild Rose Pumpkin class? Tell us about that one. Oh, so excited about this. And I'll be posting pictures of this pretty soon. Um, so, you know, ghost pumpkins are so hot right now. Mm -hmm. Everyone's about them. And everybody loves those aquas and those teals and those muted pastels. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I go through designing, I really do what probably everybody else here does. Like I get on all the design boards, the house boards, the Pinterest, all that. And I start looking at what we want to have in our lives. And I realize this fall, this is my prediction is that it's going to be about the ghost pumpkin. So this is going to be a very beginner painting where we do these beautiful white pumpkins against a aqua field with simple kind of a, a lot of people think of these as decorative or one stroke kind of, you know, where you're just double loading your brush little roses that we're going to put on them and it's going to be great for the kitchen it's going to be great for like the living room you're going to be showing it off to your friends it's going to be fantastic so you're you're hold on, hold on. what'd you what say you right. oh so we're gonna it, we're gonna use those methods where you just load your brush double load it so like you just make one little brush stroke it comes from an 11th century painting that makes me very happy because i know how simple that is Yes. And I know that if you teach me that with your techniques, I yep. can come and paint every surface in my house. Well, I feel like this method has been out there for a few hundred years and has successfully painted cabinetry and paintings and things for years. 
you know, we had everything. But yeah. the thing I like about it, I agree with you. It's nothing. It's nothing new, and it's it's been around forever. I remember it when I was in art school. But the cool thing are in art in high school. But the cool thing is, if you this is what I love about what you do, because I watched in your, you know, I snuck in and watched a whole bunch of stuff. What I loved was first off the class. Your class setting is just you can do it. It's there. There is no question. Can someone accomplish a painting? But it is a given. Yeah. And the second thing about your class is I might be painting this pumpkin painting, but I'm going to be learning techniques that I can take and put into other paintings when I get home. And even better, I have you to hold my hand on your YouTube channel because you literally we would we'll just transform it over time learning with you. It's awesome. And we put them up uh, after the events over on the YouTube channel. So if there was anything you wanted to go back and revisit and I learned so much from you guys that now I have all these supplemental materials. We've got our step-by-step -step pictures. We have a lot more coming for this because that last one, that was like, you know, like I had said to you, that's my trial by fire. I'm in that yep. paying my dues stage. So um, I took everything from my time at, you know, teaching classes and painting parties and how that works. But then I learned from you guys and now I'm ready. Well, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of things that are upgraded in this event from last event. Things that we noticed, like one thing is your space is much bigger. The <laughs> second thing we're really happy about is Cinnamon will be teaching everyone facing forward. So if you were in our class last time, I just want to make that clear because it, it was all great. And everyone, I think, I mean, no one had a bad time. But when I was looking in the room, I thought, you know, if everybody was facing because we had round tables. Right. Cinnamon's class says she's going to have everybody facing forward this time. Um, so if that was something for you last time that you really had wished and thought that we should do that this time, we got it. Yeah. And I think, I think people will like that. I mean, like it did work cause I'll walk a class. I'll walk, I'll, I'll carry my canvas and walk. I'm going to come. And then of course, you know, I have people that have maybe painted with me a few hundred paintings. They started out never having painted before, but they're in. So we, I know I've got a bunch of people coming and, and you can't uh, have painted with me for any amount of time and not be there for the person sitting next to you. So I love the community that happens in the classes and the way everybody is reaching out. I'm so, I, I'm like, it was very interesting because I wanted to give you guys the best stuff for fall, right? Yeah. But I was like, man, this pumpkin is going to be huge on YouTube. So everyone who comes, they're going to get it first. Because I, I think this is going to be, it's going to be the look, I'm hoping. It's going to be the look in my house anyway. <laughs> well, I'm excited about that. I think that'll be cool. We got to, and we need to remember too, because um, it's September. So you're going to come home and hang that on your wall. You guys are going to take this class and come home and hang it up ready for the season. Both of the projects are for the season. It's so you're, you're ahead. Um, they'll all lead into everything else that you might want to do. Cards, any decorative painting you want to do, they work for that. Nobody has to bring any materials. Like you just have to bring yourself and a little bucket of optimism. I love that. Uh, here's the thing about cinema's class. Like if you're, so most people would go, Oh, I'm not an artist. I'm not a painter. I'm not this. That doesn't matter. Uh -huh. I don't care if you come to cinema's class and when you leave, you don't love your first painting. That doesn't matter. You will love the experience. I promise you what you get to. And what cinnamon said about her classroom being, it's almost like one big student. There's no one that's left out. There's no one alone in the corner, not knowing what to do. It is, it was literally like one big student in your, yes. and I love that. Yeah. And, that, and I think that's, that's like the best part is, is the fact that, and, and you come away with friends. I, I think that's what I loved about the convention last time was seeing people who knew each other online had, you know, they know each other from chats, from your chats, from my chats on Facebook. Lord help us with Facebook. <laughs> then no one is so far, girl. <laughs> I'm gonna find Mark Zuckerberg and we're gonna sit down and have and have a serious talk. We're gonna have a come to the moment talk. <laughs> but you know, where we know each other through this, but getting to see each other, getting to know people face to face and putting faces and humans um and people to those names. There's just nothing like it. And um I, I had done small meetups 
like like you know if i was just in an area at VidCon, i'd be like tweet out last minute i'm gonna be at the disney park if anybody wants to come it was not a big push but like those friendships having become lifelong friendships and then seeing it made at con i saw friendships that became lifelong friendships that i'm so excited i can't wait to like we're responsible for a wedding that's my dream we will i've been invited look cinnamon i got invited to a wedding I got invited to a graduation, like, cause they're family. It, we don't, um, it's really cool. You don't meet people. Like you said, it is a lifelong friendship. And not only that we get to meet, but they get to meet together. And the one thing that's really cool, and we're totally not talking about your classes, but like how many times do you hear somebody say, how can I meet up with people in my area? Or how can I get with somebody who can help encourage me? And we never really have a place to funnel that. But if you come to this event, yeah. you will meet but well, let me take this back. If you want to meet crafters that will support you, you will meet crafters that will support you and will. I, how would you avoid them? Let's like take it back. How would you avoid them? They're everywhere. They're there from dawn till the wee hours in the morning. The wee hours. We're going to talk about that too. The <laughs> wee hours. Um, let's talk about your dream tree class. And when you do, we had a question. Maybe you can answer at the same time. Okay. I'd love to. What if I can't draw? So you can kind of talk about that at the same time. So I have a very strong opinion. Um, something to know about artists we come with strong opinions i try to curb most of mine but one of the strong opinions that i don't curb is that drawing and art are not irrevocably connected is there, there's a weird idea that you have to be able to draw to be creative and there's literally no evidence that backs that in art it's 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 great to me because i'm thinking well there's a lot of people that work in textiles that certainly don't draw. There's a lot of people that work in, you know, sculpture that, you know, they work in clay. They're not drawers. Like drawing is just a skill. You can learn it. You not learn it. Um, I think it's great if you want to pick it up. And I think it can be learned just like painting. In painting, I actually think of it more in terms like you might in quilting or blocking out areas. We, we block out places that things take shape. But we don't really worry about those shapes. I have traceables. I have a lot of get around. So if you feel anxiety here, I, I, I they're like art whoobies. You got to get your art whoobie. I got all the art whoobies. The tree that we're doing is uh, one of my Q-tip trees. Uh, we, we use very little brush in this. This is actually sponge and Q-tip mostly. So what I would say is that uh, we're going to have alcohol wipes so you can clean up your manicure. <laughs> but... Um, it's really not about drawing. It's about playing. And I think for a lot of people who have it in their head, they, they can't. Um, the Q-tips really break that down the quick. First, because you're like, well, it's a bunch of Q-tips. So how, how hard could it be? And then you get to doing it and you're like, well, this makes a tree real easy. Yep. Right? Like I have an example. It's not the one we're doing because we're doing one that's really colorful and very fall. Okay. Um, but I have a winter one I've got coming up and you can kind of see it. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. Right. And so this is a winter version of one of these trees. And that's all done with Q-tips and a sponge <laughs> and one little brush. That's beautiful. People will love that. And, and, and these, they're just, sometimes the techniques, it's like, it's like uh, probably a lot like card making or working with paper. It's like, of course, if you're putting together something complicated, if you just looked at the whole project, how you would make it just seems overwhelming. But once you understand the tools and the process, it's just a one step at a time thing. What and we see in the South is how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Yeah. I don't know why we're all eating elephants. I say that too. I think elephants, if they have a problem with people, it's fair because we're always like, how do you eat an elephant? Elephants are probably over there going, hey, stop eating this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's like... Um, even in graphic design, we look at things as shape. You start with shapes. You don't even, you know, you start with the surface area before you ever get to detail. So it's, it all makes sense to me, but I can, I should say to everyone after watching Cinnamon's class, you, you won't be lost. Mm -hmm. you, you will not feel like a beginner because yeah. you know why? Because everyone's a beginner. Like you all start with a blank canvas and Cinnamon does too. And it's like, you just go step by step. And when it's done, you will literally close your eyes and open them and go, I can't believe I did that. Yeah. I think that's, that's my favorite part is that ma that to me is the magic trick of uh, teaching art. Um, I love telling other people in art how the beginner is my favorite, just my very favorite. 
because there's this really great moment. They're looking at the empty canvas. You can see them go through like literally their life it flashes before their eyes. <laughs> Every time they've had some experience where they felt like somehow they couldn't be creative, right? Some crazy thing happened where they're like, well, I only do stick figures or I, you know, some art teacher said something silly or some family member said something silly, you know, that makes a person go, oh, well, I, I probably shouldn't do this. And then when they get to the end, they realize it's just layers, it's just steps. All you have to do is complete. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to make every brush stroke the most epic brush stroke that ever was. You know, it's just make a brush stroke. And nobody's tree and nobody's pumpkin is going to look the same. And that was fun for me. Like I would walk around and I'd see people come out of cinnamon's class and I'd go, let me see your painting. And it would be a variation of cinnamons, but still gorgeous. Like, yeah, they are variation. And that's what I like about it. I think it's so and, cool. And should be. Like I have a very strong feeling like they the way that we color because we're essentially coloring it's just an expression of ourselves so if I'm a very organized person and my cabinet is color coordinated and alphabetized and segmented out by date and category and we all have these friends yeah. I love it when they come over and straighten out my house that's my favorite that's right. but you know, I'm like, come on over and they're like do you mind if I do your cabinets I'm like not at all sweetie but you know, their their painting may have very orderly strokes in it and it, and it and it may be very controlled. And then, you know, their free spirited friend who's got hair like me, who's like twirling in the chair, they might have a very loose painting. It's but their painting should be different. We're not, you know, we're not trying to forge art. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and and copy machines already have that covered. Yes, they do. <laughs> You're so funny. Okay, hold on. Let me look for a question. But while I am, the next class you're going to talk about is your spa um, slash freestyle painting. Yes. So let me see if there's any questions real quick because you might can answer at the same time. I'm excited about this. It's a big experiment. I love that it, everyone came in and they're like, yeah, what are we doing? Let's do it. I don't even know what it is. Let's go. I know. That's me too. Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. No questions, but there are some cute comments. We'll go back and look at those in a minute too. I love cute comments. I know. I do too. Okay. Spa freestyle painting workshop. Workshop. Now this is a workshop. So this is not a class. Mm -mm. is going to explain to you kind of the difference in this one. Well, in, in the, what you're going to be coming in and doing, and I want some of it to be a surprise because it's an emotional journey. There's an idea in art. It's uh, called uh, studio resiliency. <laughs> and it, what it is, a bunch of psychiatrists studied artists, and they noticed we have a weird emotional resilience in life. Though so sometimes I feel like when I'm going through my week, I'm like, where's my resiliency? <laughs> but it's this set of emotional skills that we develop through the art process because you know you're facing a blank canvas you have to constantly in in art no matter how skilled you are you know every so many paintings are not going to work out you're constantly being thrown new media new challenges and i've been working on this sort of healing process this sort of self-awareness where we free create and we associate color with emotion and we work through our stuff using the canvas so you're going to come in and through a guided experience that's very relaxing and chill, we're going to take whatever we've got. We're going to get it on that canvas and that's where it's going to stay. I like to say, keep my drama on my canvas and out of my life and we're going to get it out of us and put it there and you're going to come away like going, wow, I had no idea I had that in me. That's I've, awesome. I've done this on some some healing workshops before, so I'm thinking it's going to be a really fun day. That that one, by the way, was I think really close to sold out. So grab yeah. that one. I know y'all all want to go get that one. So yeah. go grab it. That one's Thursday at one o'clock, by the way. So it'll be a nice way to kick off the weekend and your event. And if you are nervous, take this class, and then everything else will be fine. And actually, everything else for the whole rest of the week, you're going to be like, "What you got?" Throw it at me. I'm good. I can do it. What do you got? What do you got? I think you should. I think you're going to go away. You're going to be like, that was so great. I just, I just feel so free now because I think that's what we get to do as artists. Like, you know, the difference when I come up to a canvas and I look at it, if I have a plan or not, I feel very uh, invited into that space, right? To that creative space by my art materials. And this is about how we get into that space. And the everyone is an artist. 
right? And yeah. we actually make a lot of art decisions in our day, but how we access those and know that like how we think of ourselves and our health and in certain associations with color and being able to play with that's going to be a lot of fun. I have to tell you that Frisky Christie, which is hard to say, but I got it out, uh, tells us, no, 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 not a workshop. It's a play shop. Very I love Christy. Hey, Christy. <laughs> Very good. She's exactly right. I want to make sure I gave her much credit for that because she's right. Um, play shop. I, I like that. I like to. We might have to start doing that play shop. I like it a lot. <laughs> so, and then there's one other play shop that you're going to be having, and it is the Secret Life of Color. This sounds awesome. Right. So, um, Color is a tricky business because we go into kindergarten and they say, all right, red and yellow make orange. And, and then later in life, people think, I'm going to go take an art class. And they, and they buy a kit. We've all done it. We go, we, we go to the craft store and we see the set of 48 that's economical. And we go, well, I don't want to invest in a bunch of stuff. Right. <laughs> Cause I don't know if I'm going to do it again. So you grab the economical kit, you go and you mix red and, and yellow and it, it makes kind of a brown and you're like, wait, what happened? I can't even make orange. Right. And so this is going to explain, this is going to take about, uh, it's so funny. I, I wish art school was like this. This is going to make everything that's covered in art school really fun, really simple and really easy. And I'm going to unlock the secret agenda of color and why sometimes when we mix blue and yellow, we're not getting the green we expect and how to know when our colors have secret agendas. And we're gonna use like a lot of funny pop culture stuff like, you know, uh, Twilight references and all those things that we relate to to understanding color families. Some of our colors are secretly biased. Well, I, I totally get what you're saying. I'm like, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, excited for other, I'm gonna be excited for other people to get that because, you know, in our mind we think, oh, all reds and all yellows mixed together make orange. Mm, I love that you said they have a secret agenda because they do. <laughs> yeah, they have a secret agenda, and sometimes we don't discover it until it's on the palette, and we're like, "What are you up to?" And it's like, "I'm blue." <laughs> yep, yep. I love that. So that one, though, how long is I don't have that on here. I should have asked. Anyway, that one is one of her play shops. Mm -hmm. Play shops. And you will take away so much knowledge, and it's very affordable. And if you can't even afford to take one of Cinnamon's classes, which are extremely affordable, because you literally walk in with your bucket of optimism that's it and yeah. you if you just want to take her workshop this is a perfect opportunity for you to just get to know who cinnamon is get to see how she teaches learn from her instantly and then go back and watch every video on her youtube channel because and i think it. that workshop um like if you're not a painter i would even say take this workshop because no matter what you're into from quilting to uh, every type of crafting, like if you're wreath making, yeah, painting, understanding what's going on with color, like what it's really up to, it's going to make all of that so much easier. Um, when I used to quilt, people would be like, "How do you put those together?" It's I've got a lot of color theory, so I understand that this crazy stuff is going to work in a way that nobody would expect it to. So it applies everywhere. You, you you do it in paper crafting all the time. Is it breaking up? Is my sound? Are you? Oh, you are breaking up a little bit. Oh. Weird. Gotta go check their kid casting. <laughs> I'm looking for questions. If anybody has questions for Cinnamon, and I'm also looking for. Um, that's cute. Ron says you need to learn all thousand versions of white. <laughs> <laughs> True, it's there's true. a lot of them. There's a lot of white and a lot mm. of black, a lot of gray. Fifty shades, in fact, and it comes in a kit at Jerry's Artorama. And I give it out at Christmas. All my cheeky friends. The kids. Okay, everyone loves your hair color, by the way. I have to let oh, you know. Thank you. Everyone loves it. And then this is cute. Ron said, "Paint by numbers theory without the numbers." Oh yeah, and you're gonna get some handouts. These are gonna be. Um, a lot of new materials are going to be introduced at MadeItCon that will be there before my community even gets to see them. Um, I'd love these comments. You guys are hilarious. All right. This is your question. Glamma Jamma on Thursday. Let's talk about Glamma Jamma. Let's talk about the Glamma Jamma. So here's the idea of the Glamma Jamma. One, it's like a slumber party and you do dress up. 
I highly encourage that you make hats and fancy jammas and you come themed out. We had a lot of unicorns. <laughs> and, I, and I think we could have more unicorns. You know, you just come and I um, bring a bunch of very high end art materials that you might not, you know, been exposed to like Neo2 from Karandash or these different great things we put out paper we put out materials and we make things we've got an ATC table so if you want to make smartest trading cards we're gonna have swaps going on all there um, there's a bunch of adventures that are happening and it's really just about staying up late and being social and making those friendships and trying out some you know trying out some stuff without have to maybe shell out the money for that stuff <laughs> It's really like if you were to say an art party, like if you'd ever thought you went to an art party, no, a costume art party, that's yeah. what it's like. So don't be afraid to costume up. Like if you, um, there was everything, there were, like she said, unicorns, there were, I think I saw some superheroes. Did I see a few of those? Like whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter. You dress up. Now the thing about the Glamajama party, I want to say this, if you're not comfortable in your Glamajamas, just come anyway. You ain't got a Glamajama. But if you want to wear your jammas, this is a good opportunity. And this is open to everyone. Like if you're in the area and you're only taking like a class here or there or whatever, this is an open event for you to come to. It's um, it's late because it's, you know, after we've done everything else and it'll go kind of late and um, it'll just be fun. There's photo opportunities. Um, is John is John bringing his button machine again this year? That was my I'm favorite gonna bring the button machine again I'm sure we're gonna bring some other stuff we got our photo booth working oh cool so that'll be up and going and so people can take props and dress up and get in the photo booth and get those posted right on social media so everybody knows we're having a good time and they're not the best part about this event to me is you get to spend some time with cinnamon in a very um, casual, uh, not that her classes are not casual and laid back, they're very comfortable, but it's a different setting. She's not teaching and she's able to hold conversations and it's really nice to see Cinnamon be able to kind of bounce around like that. And we're the same way too. I didn't get to enjoy Glam and Jam last time because now you guys know my uh, daughter-in-law went into labor <laughs> while we were out there. And so every night after I finished, we were headed to the hospital, but all that is behind us. And um, we have a blessed little grandbaby because of it. But this time I should be able to get in there and enjoy it. But I was, I was like slinking in going, I'm going to bed. I'm so tired. It's so good though. That was craft or resiliency right there. Why didn't you, were just like, you were like, everything's cool. It's all good. <laughs> we're all crazy. good. Events happening, right? And I would see you going out. I'm like, wow, everything is like still flowing along like it's fine. We told the teachers, I remember going, okay. I said, girls, you'll have to tell them what's going on. We'll be at the hospital if you need us, call us. And so everything, oh. everything was great. You just, it was fantastic. Everybody was great. So um, I, I hope more of the teachers will come and we'll goof and stuff more. I'd, li I'd like, I'm definitely going to be like, I, I, you know, like I loved it when you and me and, and Chris were just goofing off. That was so much fun. We're just dangerous because the three of us are very much alike. <laughs> so we're just dangerous because we could just bounce off each other for days. Just boom, boom, boom. But um, I do think if the other teachers, I'm going to challenge other teachers to come because even if you can only come for 15, 20, 30 minutes, it's really cool to kind of um, bounce off of each other like that and get to be in a setting. See, normally, and you'll get this, but this kind of behind the scenes, we have like literally today, Cinnamon comes on five minutes till this live. We're like, okay, what are we doing? We talk about it, blah, blah. And we don't get to have these conversations. Um, just that was crazy. I'm so, okay, first of all, Thank you, Amanda, for messaging me. <laughs> That's how we do things around here. We're kind of, uh, well, I guess it's mostly me, Cinnamon, and Christopher. We really work that way. Like, Christopher could say, hey, let's do a live in 15 minutes. Okay, we can do it. Wait, do you know what I was doing? I was literally about to go, like, so glad you wrote me, because I was literally about to go live and teach this watercolor on Facebook. <laughs> Hey, well, now you can do that and tell everybody. So this is such a good opportunity. Are you going to go do it? After we're done here, uh, I think it's a, yeah, we're going to, uh, one thirty. I think was our plan or somewhere around there. You know, I'm always late. My community knows me. They know. It's so weird. I'm not late because I'm entitled. I'm late because I'm unorganized. I'm late because of technology. Always. 
I need a John. Matter of fact, I was just talking about this the other day. I was like, I'm going to message Cinnamon and go, if you were going to hire John Cooney, what would you advertise you were looking for? <laughs> I, I want. We did that recently. And I will share with you the crazy ad we put, because we didn't want anyone to know we were on YouTube, right? <laughs> And we just wanted people to search, but we put this ad out because we wanted a particular personality and I will share with you what we did. It was so funny. It was basically like, are you a secret unicorn? <laughs> <laughs> just imagine the people on Monster Jobs going, I don't know. Am I? Like, what am I looking for? <laughs> we did an ad recently. Now we forget we're live. Okay. We, we know we're still live. We're just chatting. But we did an ad recently. <laughs> for someone to work in house and we didn't want them to know we're on YouTube either because then you I'm afraid you don't get a real visual of who yeah. the person is that kind of think oh I want to work because you're on YouTube so yeah. we did that too and we didn't get a good turnout because it's like it just didn't sound that exciting of a job <laughs> I will share the whole thing we got a ton of applicants we got a bunch of applicants we couldn't even afford that I didn't even think would be in my city like I'm well, like if John wants to move to Alabama, we can make that happen because I could really use John Cooney right now. <laughs> well, you know, um, you can like ping him up anytime. Hey, you think that, but neither he nor I have time to sit. Okay, but he's here. Like we're like, I like literally like when Amanda like messaged me, I was like scanning this and I'm like, Hey John, are we live today with baby? <laughs> and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like going through all my messages going, I can't find it. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Camera. I don't know if we're on our show. I don't even know what tweet to send out. I'm like, hmm. All right, let me look for questions real quick because we we just started chatting. Um, let's see. Tamitha said it was fun to sit back and watch the wheel spin when when you and I and Christopher were chatting it up. Uh, let's see. Where's the question? May May, are the classes in the resort or across the road in the end? Actually, the classes are in their own building, but they're on the same site. So the, the hotel and the inn are just like a parking lot away from each other. But the actual convention center is literally on site and there's um, like sidewalks that take you to the building. So it's a little disconnected, but not in, it's in the parking lot. So you don't have to drive or anything. Oh, oh, and I'm bringing something crazy for the maid to go around. Oh, what? Oh, oh man. tell us. It's a secret. It, I, you know, I have to do some more testing because I've got to <laughs> figure out how to accelerate drying time. Oh, okay. Right, because you guys only give us ten minutes, which is you get fifteen, fifteen minutes. But in painting, that is crazy. You're supposed to get fifteen minutes, and I'm convinced that Vince did not give us fifteen minutes last time, but he will this time because I'm setting it where he can't change it. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna have to like come set up. Like I'm gonna be getting with you, and I'm doing some testing. But okay. just uh, we're calling it like Camp Sherpa Waka. Oh, okay. So when you get to my table, you will be entering camp strip of waka waka. And we're gonna be we're gonna make we're gonna have some fun and we're gonna get that feeling loud and yelling. I'm gonna have to come up with cheers for my table. Yeah, we gotta come up with cheers. <laughs> there has to be cheers. If you're a good cheer squad, you you know where to find me. You message me all the Sherpa cheers you think we should be doing. Cause you know, I loved last year when we were cheering back and forth at the end of it where each table was going around going like that was hilarious. We we do need to do that. So I need to get with teachers and say, okay, prep your, it's for us. It's vacation Bible school all over again. Anybody who's done vacation Bible school knows everybody's got their cheer and they're all chanting it. So we'll all have to have our table cheers. That'll be super yeah. cute. Yeah. Any any level of camp, you know, band yeah. camp, death right. camp, uh, horse camp, just wherever whatever camp you come from. Or if you didn't, you know camp, if you didn't get camp, I didn't get my mom got camp. I didn't get camp. Oh, Trent Comer says to let John know he thinks he's coming to Maidicon. Trent is okay. First of all, everyone, take a minute. Do you know who Trent is? I know who Trent is, and I have um, I owe Trent an email. Do you? Yeah, oh, Trent. So, so Trent um, is from Canton, Ohio, and he runs the public broadcasting there, and he does Sherpa thoughts where he literally puts us on Roku. And was it the first Monday, John? Uh, I Trent, Trent will know and he'll say it in the chat and then the chat will be on replay. I should know this, but I'm not locked in today because my hair is blowing back. <laughs> but he runs, he like literally runs us on public broadcasting in 24 hours. So I'm just trying to think of people like in the local like drinkery, like late at night, like at one in the morning. What looking at my face going, you can paint this up in Cat Ohio. Woo! 
Is all that stuff secret or is it not? It's, I didn't ask you if that's something that can be talked about. I should right. ask. Oh, your cinnamon, yours is the first Sunday of the month. Okay. Because Trent and I um, are communicating. Oh, okay. It's not secret. It's okay. Perfect. I'm super excited because it looks like I'm going to be able to do that as well. Yes. We don't know to what extent. I kind of, Trent made the comment, which I thought was super cute. He was like, I could kind of do like a, a, like a variety show kind of thing where I could do just kind of a bunch of stuff for this one segment and then yeah. play it. And I don't know. We, I don't know how far we can, where well, we can. All, all I can say is I love the people of Canton, Ohio. I think they're amazing. Cool. Uh, I love that they um, have gotten public TV and Roku like happening again. I think it's, you know, I think Mr. Rogers, I think we need these kinds of energies again in our world. I I, I know you are a big advocate for this uh, responsible social media. And I think that these kind of influences, this kind of messaging is needed more now than ever. You know what we need, Cinnamon? We just need Bob Ross back. It is. I'm trying to imagine Bob. I was thinking today uh, what it would, it would be like for Bob. Oh, do, did you know? Okay, so like, uh, you know how we did St. Jude? Yes, yes. So, if you guys don't know, uh, and I'm so grateful to May May and Melody and everyone who was involved in this, several artists participated in Play Live, even though that's normally for gamers. And it, it's a fundraiser and awareness raiser for St. Jude Children's Hospital. And as part of that, traditionally, gamers created the rules. You have to create milestones. And if you reach milestones with your community, you're supposed to do things for them. And so we had uh, John painting live for the first time, which he did. And we had jokes. And then there was me painting along with Bob Ross. I love that. But with an oil kit with his kit following his video in real time lock. Oh, I love it. So we're talking to Bob's people right now because we know some of Bob's people. Yeah. And we're talking to Bob's people to see if we can officially like get the go ahead to do that. Uh, so let Bob's people know that we're wonderful and we only have great I, people, I was just thinking, like, what would it be like for him now? Because he's so big on Twitch, which is yeah. a young kid's thing. And he's so big on Netflix. And Facebook is so crazy, as we all know. I tell people all the time when they ask me about Cinnamon, I say she is the modern day Bob Ross. Can, can I say this? And maybe he's going to second this. But, like, for all of our viewers, I, I want to say this. Facebook is for recipes. Cute garden pictures, adorable pets, keeping up with grandkids, family members, funny quotes, and sharing your creativity. Everything else needs to go to another portal. Exactly right. And it and it's not and not a portal that I'm on. Like I don't I don't I am not on a portal where negativity should exist. No, I'm no, okay, there. there are people literally paid for all that stuff. I advocated for that recently and people are coming back saying, no, this Facebook is for this other thing. And I'm going to say, no, seriously, I want to see your yummy bacon, cheesy recipes. I've got a good friend and he shares food I can't eat. And I'm so grateful for that. I want to see all the food. I want to see all the art. I want to see all that stuff. I think that we should apply on Facebook the same rules we do at Thanksgiving dinner, which is that, the, you know, the three topics you're never supposed to talk about in play dinner. <laughs> Just like, let's just not do it. Like, 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 let's just not because, because it's, it's not going to go well for any of us. And especially like, and I know we're not doing a Facebook chat and it's one I'm going to have to let you go so you can get yeah. a Facebook thing. Yeah. But especially this, if you're in our groups that we own, like this is my world and Cinnamon's world. We want our world to be like we are. So if someone posts a very, like if I, if I post art, it's intimate to me. Mm -hmm. And I did it on purpose and it took a lot for me to take a photo and upload it. Well, I don't need to hear your negative opinion of my art. There should never be a negative opinion of it ever. And so look, cinnamon, I could absolutely do a whole telethon on bringing, bringing courtesy back to social media. And I feel that way about YouTube too. Cause I get so tired of the comments I get that are just like, this is what's happened. People see us on this two dimensional screen uh -huh. and they forget that it is 10 o'clock at night and I'm sitting down after a day, whatever I've had, and I open my comments and whatever I read is going to affect me because I'm a real person. And if I read something negative, then I don't sleep for the whole night being upset about, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't do that to people. We are real people who we respond to real comments in a oh, real and I'll way. Have, people are always 
shocked when I have a real reaction. It's like, it's like, notice I'm an artist. I could relax, re react in a very mellow way. Like if you have an art question, you can ask me about the color white all day. Yep. But other than that, you don't really know how it's going to go. <laughs> the part, the part that kills me is people forget yeah. that we are real people who read real comments and they affect us in a real way. And we have, I mean, just imagine like, and I, I won't get on my soapbox, but just imagine. Oh, no, this is a good soapbox and everybody knows I'm like, they're probably watching this going, because we had the tweet. That's why we have the Twitter. Oh, exactly. and, this is, and so I think this is an important thing to say, especially <laughs> in today's climate, because you and I share this feeling. And you're the same person. You are riding down the road in the passenger seat of your car on mm -hmm. your social media, because we have to answer questions 24 hours a day. We don't have to, we want to, okay? Mm -hmm. We want to answer you. And so I, I'll be in the car and then I'm with my children and everything's great and I'm answering questions or I'm coming and then boom. And it's like, you didn't even, what you said made no sense toward what the video you watched. It was mm. ugly, it was just mean. And it's like, I have to then, I won't even read them out loud anymore. Did I tell you this? I, they are not getting space. They might get a second ahead space, but if I read it, like used to, I go listen to what this person said to me. No, 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 no. My family does not need to know that. You know what I'm oh, saying? That's a good point. My mom definitely look. My mom's also on YouTube, and I'm I'm going to say right now, don't even don't because she's not wired like me. Right? <laughs> she does not play, and she will take you. <laughs> to social media put an arrow on you and go right here just don't I, I I'm a deleter I got I got everything on filter and I'm a deleter I think Facebook I think we should treat like Thanksgiving dinner and I'm, I'm advocating for this I'm gonna keep advocating which is they um just keep it to the recipes right just keep it because yeah. like if you say something crazy to me and now I see you I'm, I might block you um, I made a rule on my Facebook group, my Facebook group last night. Like this rule popped up last night, and it is this: if you use an angry emoji, you are out. But I won't on your group then. But I have never been booted from a group. Me either. I've never, I've never broken rules in a group. I've never. Look, if you tell me I can't discuss this in your group, I'm not discussing it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've never put a link in a group that's not supposed. If you know, I know the rules, and if I have a link I want to share, or I have something I want to share, I go and look and see if it's allowed. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, and, and we're all just people and, and, and I get it. And we're not going to, um, artists come in every flavor and in, in every way of thinking and every way of being. Um, and you know, we no one is a cookie cutter. It's funny that you said you're a deleter because, um, my admins and I, we struggle with that because we don't want to just be delete delete you know we want you to understand why we would want to delete that so it'll make a change but it just opens arguments and it's better just to go we just have to delete that it just doesn't it never lands well so if you ever post something negative in my group and it disappears that's why because there's just no i'm not going to give it time it, it, it it's such a better way of doing it and um and i love facebook like i love that we can connect i love being able to see all of the stuff i love twitter i actually have the best twitter account ever I, I, but I, I avoid all the parts of Twitter that are crazy. Like my Twitter is all art and funny quips and that's all we doing. And see, I love Instagram because I feel like Instagram is one of those kind of just like a big photo book. Yeah, it is like a big photo book. It is the best. Of all my friends and I just look through their album and I don't have to worry about, you just don't see a lot of, I mean, unless you follow political accounts, you just don't really see a lot of people share. It. And here's, and this is my thought and I'll, and, and I'm, I'm going to challenge everybody. All of us are be uh, beings with opinions. There's no way to get here without them. And I, I'm not saying you don't have a right to them. And you can even, you have a right to an opinion I may even passionately disagree with in my heart and my being. But the person who is paid to hear it is your local representative. That's true. Right? That's a person who's paid. That's their job. Like, literally, that's who I like. Of course, I have opinions. May May's not going to know them. I love her dearly. She's never going to know what mine are. I have a guy, uh, he's paid, I, he lives real well, I see him all the time, I have actually a girl and a guy and a bunch of people, and I just let him know, and that's who it's, that's where it's supposed to go, and if Facebook messes something up and it doesn't work, Mark Zuckerberg is where that's supposed to go, that's if his job. The thing would not, people don't, people don't know about us, 
But But our Lawrence friends are very different. And like you said, we have opinions. But you know what? You and I don't sit around and have those conversations. Uh That's what we're about together. Uh And I can be your friend and you we probably vary so differently on so many things. Sure. Why does that matter? Because I just love you. Right. And I support you in what you're doing. (laughs) And I would never come to your social media space and like he like it's enough that I have so many polarizing art materials. <laughs> so I try to keep it to that, and I think that that's just something as creatives that we can lead the way. And I loved your uh, post the other day about uh, posting kindness. Mm-hmm. I think that that it's such a powerful tool, um, and I think that there's so much that we can do. Like my my group, your group, it's so joyful to see the creativity, and I see people that I know. You know, they come from very different life experiences from all over the world, but they can come together and like just share art and be loving and supportive of that. And I just think that social media is for us to do those things. And I think that we need to be uh, thought leaders in this area. And and I don't always live up to this ideal, but it's my goal. Mm -hmm. It's my goal to live up to this ideal, which is to be say this is for art. This is for this. There's people paid for this other nonsense. Let's let's give it to them because they're the ones empowered to do something about it anyways. And, you know, recognize that we're in a global community mm-hmm. and we have the power to be amazing. I agree with you 100 percent. And I think our viewers are, are going to start learning that because I think we're going to be much more vocal about it. And I mean, I've always tried to be, but it's become yeah, been great. It's been a project. And speaking of I want to say this because you made that comment. That's what that's what made it con was about. Like it's not called cardathon or scrapbookathon or acrylic paintathon because I just like to bring makers together. It's not about because I mean that's how we become friends. Like Cinnamon's art journey is one hundred percent different than mine, but we still understand. But creating is what brings us together, and that's what made it con is. Yeah, I agree, and I'm gonna say this right now. Uh, crafting is art. It I, mean, is I have art. a lot of education in the creative field, and I'm going to say this officially as an expert. Being a crafter is being an artist. The only, the only reason we even have to use different words is we're talking about an intent of end result. Like if I'm, if I'm doing art, maybe that's, that's for my wall only, and it doesn't have a utilitarian purpose in any way. When my art becomes useful in my life, then I might refer to it as craft. But every craft is a fine art it just has a different outcome it's a you're 100 correct and i appreciate that and i know my viewers appreciate it because it is it's the same i get the same emotion from making a card that you get from painting a canvas and the same design the same uh creativity the same imagination all the same processes are involved i mean it's like really a problem to mail a painting so i don't just mail them to people cards are better for that but there i mean a tiffany lamp we all know is as much a fine art piece as a warhol painting maybe not everyone's into warhol i gotta be careful i've been posting painters lately (laughs) these watch parties okay before we go i have to say this to you have you done a watch party i haven't because i haven't had time to learn about them yet so i haven't done it okay i'm gonna say this to you and all your viewers so you guys go into this um Watch parties, I would say pre-screen everything because so far I have done three things that I would have sworn were safe for workspaces that did work. So pre-screen everything. I love them. I think we should all do them in our groups, but pre-screen them. And if ever you're in a creator's group and it goes weird, it's not their fault. (laughs) See, I haven't messed with them. I've been kind of. They're wonderful. They're, they're wonderful, wonderful things. But like I shared Andy Goldsworthy, who's one of my very favorite artists, but it seems he's working on a new body of work that is not safe for work and is so different than anything he's ever done before and oh. would not have predicted it. So what I would say is assume nothing. <laughs> assume nothing. <laughs> you can go through life with that one. That's a good one. Assume nothing. <laughs> so, but yeah, definitely do some of those watch parties. I love your community. I can't wait to meet everybody. Can't wait to do the make it go around. I can't wait to see you again. If you do any of your online campaigns, count me in. I challenge everybody to just like today, just share all the recipes and art and positivity and just flood out the stuff because we solve nothing on Facebook 
Mark Zuckerberg, he does not care about what he wants. He doesn't even look at it. They, be honest. He doesn't. That's just all. If there's something that's really important to you, definitely take that to the right places and like tell me all about your garden, the cool birds you saw, your adorable pet. Oh my gosh, I love your pets. Um, your cute kids and recitals and all that stuff. And let's make the feed what it really should be about, about which is like friendships and uh, uh, really cool, tasty videos. Love all those. Love those too. <laughs> Spam me all you want. Share, share any of the stuff May May's doing. You just go ahead and post it on my feed. Perfect. Anything you're doing with May May, post it on my feed. I want to see it today. That's my challenge for the day. Anything with cinnamon, like that's just how we are. We love each other. Okay. And each other's community. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to wrap it up because Cinnamon's late and I'm fixing to be. We're, we're supposed to go live at 2 to finish an album we're working on. That's on YouTube. Anyway, we okay. love you guys. Go grab Cinnamon's classes. They're going to get gone. I'm already telling you. They may be gone. I don't know. Go grab them. And we will see you guys in um, Tennessee. And I'm literally seriously going to hang up Cinnamon because we both are late. Yeah, we're both late. But you have a great show. Love you guys. Have a great one. All right, bye. Bye.